What's up all my YouTube buddies? It's me Jacob with another YouTube video for you. Uh, today I'll be doing the second movie in my pre-1980 classic series. The second one in the month of January. Of course my first was 12 Angry Men. If you hadn't watched that video, I'll leave a link in the description. Definitely a great film if you hadn't seen it. Today I'm talking about a movie that I'm pretty sure anyone who's a fan of movies has seen this movie at least once in their childhood. That is The Wizard of Oz. Why did I decide to bring up The Wizard of Oz? Well, one thing, this movie sometime will turn 80 years old. Can you believe it? The Wizard of Oz will be an 80 year old movie sometime in 2019. It was originally released back in 1939. That is insane. Some people, I think there's a lot of people out there that really don't believe this movie's that old because of the color. The movie being shot in color. And, of course, but, yeah, Technicolor was in the cinema as early as uh, the 1930s. I think Wizard of Oz was one of the movies that was a breakthrough in color cinematography. Uh, some other ones, of course, Gone with the Wind was another, which came out that same year. And The Adventures of Robin Hood was another one. So, it's definitely interesting. And I think of the three, obviously The Wizard of Oz is a movie that's, uh, you know, an acclaimed classic to this day. Interestingly, this movie bombed when it first came out. I think the budget was too expensive and... It didn't make back its budget originally because of how high the costs were. People loved the movie when it first came out. It was still a critical smash and it was Oscar nominated. It was even nominated for Best Picture. It lost to Gone with the Wind, of course, which was the record film of the year. But I think uh, over time, of course, The Wizards of Oz became a staple. I think one obviously being based on the famous book series from L. Frank Baum, I think, helped, and, you know, kids grow up reading those books. It's like, hey, we want to see the movie version, they see the movie, and they love it just as well as the books, and then, of course, it being re-released in theaters over the years, so different generations have grown up seeing The Wizard of Oz and having fond memories with it. It was also a staple when television became a big boom. And now here we are 80 years later and people still love this film. I mean, I even have the film on Blu-ray for crying out loud. I think this is the 75th anniversary Blu-ray. It says this came out in 2013 on the back. But I know there will be releasing an 80th anniversary because this is a iconic movie and Warner Brothers wants to milk as much money out of you as they possibly can. Because it's one of their biggest movies in their catalog. So what is the Vaz's story? You probably all know very well. Obviously, set in Kansas, you have uh, the, the girl Dorothy, played by Judy Garland. And this was like her breakthrough role. And she's very... She, uh, she wants more than what she has in her life as a farm girl. And she definitely wants to go beyond the rainbow in life, as you will. So, this twister comes, and she gets sucked in it with all of her dog Toto, and of course the house, and they end up in the magical land of Oz. And, you know, she, and, you know, when she crash lands in Oz, she infamously, the house infamously lands on an evil wicked witch, and Dorothy obtains her ruby red slippers, uh, since she took away that, her power. Uh, but Dorothy realizes she can't stay long because the witch's sister, the Wicked Witch of the West, you know, wants revenge, wants to avenge her death and blames Dorothy for it. So, uh, she realizes the only way to escape from her wrath is to seek counsel from the mysterious and powerful Wizard of Oz over at the Emerald City to uh, help find her a way back home and on her journey to find the Wizard of Oz uh, she encounters other individuals that have desires of their own you have the Scarecrow 
who is lacking a brain and would like one. You have the tin man who is lacking a heart and desires one. And you have the cowardly lion who really lacks courage and would like some to be a strong lion. And so obviously they journey to the Emerald City together while still being chased by the evil Wicked Witch. So like I said, The Wizard of Oz is 80 years old. Uh, the movie was directed by a guy named Victor Fleming. The irony was he directed two movies that year. He also directed Gone with the Wind. And 1939 was a year considered, I think by many historians, was con it's considered one of Hollywood's greatest years. And arguably the two most iconic films of that year were The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind, which is pretty insane they were both filmed by the same director. That's very ambitious. I know Gone with the Wind broke all the records, but I think I think the movie that's held up better, for me at least, is easily The Wizard of Oz. Uh, for a movie that's 80 years old, just the filmmaking and even the production design and the world building of Oz is still very remarkable. Yes, you can tell the entire film is filmed on a soundstage and the sets are kind of obvious to the modern eye and you see the matte paintings and walls in the background that looks hand painted and stuff but man if you just look at these sets and the way they were able to construct everything I still think they did a remarkable job at getting you immersed in this world. I think especially if you're a kid. If you're a kid that grew up watching The Wizard of Oz, it's definitely one of those world buildings where you definitely wanted, you felt like you wanted to go to this world. And Oz is definitely a great fantasy world to hang out in uh, with, you know, with the mix of you know, Munchkin Land sounds like a fun little place you know, where you can sing and dance around and you have the Emerald City uh, run by the Wizard of Oz and you have the beautiful yellow brick road. It, it, it's just neat. And uh, 80 years later, I still think the visual effects are still very, very good. Uh, the Twister sequence... Uh, it, it's still very intense to me. I mean, the, the way they pulled off, you know, how they made the Twister look frightening is still very remarkable. I, I find it sad that 80 years later, The Wizard of Oz has better Twister effects than the movie Twister, which is a 20-year-old film that was acclaimed at the time for groundbreaking visual effects. And I saw that on TV the other day, and the CGI has not aged well in that movie at all. But The Wizard of Oz, you know, had more limitations in visual effects. And that scene has held up remarkably better to me than Twister. That's just weird and kind of sad. But, again, considering the limitations, you know, the filmmakers had in 1939, you know, before CGI and stuff, it... A lot of those effects, like I said, are just so well done. I mean, you have Glinda the Good Witch, and she travels through this magic bubble. And even those effects are pulled off just so well. And it definitely feels it definitely feels real to me. I, I, I know they use something to make it look like she's traveling around, but whatever they did, I'm just blown away how they do it. I guess... You can kind of laugh at some of the makeup. I know some modern audiences might laugh. You know, clearly the cowardly lion is a guy in a suit. Same thing with the flying monkeys. But you just love the character so much that you look past the suits and makeup, and you just see them as those characters. So I you I don't really consider that a negative because I just love those characters so much. Uh, I guess another thing too, another part of this movie I always found really awesome. So the Kansas scenes are actually filmed in black and white. Technically it's called sepia tone. I don't, it's not real black and white, but they've desaturated the colors to make it look bleak and dry and definitely colorless. But then... 
uh, Dorothy steps in the eyes, I mean, it's just bright and colorful and cheery and happy. And it's just that shot where she goes out of her house in black and white, she opens the door, and everything turns color. That is one of my favorite shots in any movie. It, it just it's just really neat and it just blows me away every single time I watch it. Uh, we, of course you have the relatable characters that still make the movie timeless to this day. Obviously of course you got Dorothy played by Judy Garland. Like I said, this was her breakthrough movie. I think she was she did some stuff before Wizards of Oz, but the Wizards of Oz submitted her as an A-class actress. And definitely one of the most iconic. I think I've, I have heard complaints from some fans of the book. I feel like Judy Garland was too old to play Dorothy because I think Dorothy was younger in the books. But that aside, Garland is still excellent in this role. She definitely captures the innocence of the character uh, while still being a deeply relatable character. Obviously, she wants more than what she already has in life. And on this journey, she learns uh, that the stuff she so desired was what was already at uh, back home. And so that was a neat little lesson to learn, I think. And I, I do love the message of The Wizard of Oz. You know, that there's no place like home. And... I guess that's not a real spoiler because I don't know anyone that deliberately avoids The Wizard of Oz. I think for many people, they watch it as a kid, so. I'm sorry if I spoiled it for the, like, 0.001% that has never seen this movie. Of course, I love all the other characters, too. Uh, the Scarecrow is great. He's probably the scene stealer of the film for me. Uh, the Tin Man's fun. Uh, the Cowardly Lion's good too. Like I said, uh, he definitely had so much fun chewing the scenery as the lion with no courage. Uh, then you have uh, the Wizard of Oz, powerful, mysterious. May not be the person he thinks he is, but uh, still a cool character, uh, the great character actor that played him, uh, Frank Morgan, who's was in a lot of stuff, uh, classic stuff back in those days. Obviously, The Wizard of Oz is probably his most famous role. I also love The Wicked Witch of the West. Interesting trivia, she's played by an actress named Margaret Hamilton. Uh, her best known performance, but... Uh, before she got into acting, apparently she was a kindergarten teacher. But instead of being like the cruel, evil, scary woman she was in The Wizard of Oz in real life, she was a really nice lady. Wow. I bet... I bet her students were really traumatized when they saw her in that makeup. Because, whoa, whoa, she is so evil. And, I, and yeah, she's, she's still kind of creepy, I think, for me to this day. Uh, I think it's the makeup. That green makeup just gets me every time. But she's deliciously evil. I guess her motives can be considered kind of one-dimensional. But she, the way she pulls off that character and you know, how she's willing to kill off our main heroes just to get the ruby red slippers. Whew, she creeps me out. I know some people are creeped out by those flying monkeys. They never creeped me out for some reason. I think it's because I think even as a kid I just knew they were people in costumes. <laughs> but I can see why it would scare some kids. I think I like uh, family oriented films that are willing to I guess give some audiences a scares. I think that's an issue I have with some modern family films because they tend to play things safe. I like the ones that you know do take some risks and you know, make make some kids feel a little antsy because you need to have that drive to get them hooked in the story and that's what I love about the Wizard of Oz. It's a it's a simplistic story about a group of relatable characters that go on a journey, but it's definitely that classic hero's journey type story for all audiences to get into. And I think that's one of the reasons why The Wizard of Oz has withstood the test of time, kind of like what Star Wars was generations later. In fact, even George Lucas, I read, 
Uh, I think I watched something with him somewhere, and he used the Wizard of Oz as kind of an influence in making the characters relatable when he crafted Star Wars. And that, that, that's a really neat comparison. I can definitely see the two. Uh, the Wizard of Oz, a lot of people consider a fantasy film. It's also a musical. Yes. If you're not a musical person, I can see why the movie would turn you off. Because there are a lot of songs this movie. But for me, being a musical person, yeah, these songs are really great. Obviously, the most famous one is Somewhere Over the Rainbow. The song Judy Garland sings while still in Kansas. Just before she gets whisked away to the land of Oz. I love that song, and it's crazy to think that the song was almost cut from the movie. Yes, the producers almost cut Over the Rainbow out of the movie because they thought it dragged the pacing. Little did they know that if they had cut the song, I don't think the movie would have worked because the song is essentially... Dorothy's I Want Statement. I don't know if you've seen some interviews with one of my favorite composers, Alan Menken, but if you see some of his interviews, Alan Menken talks about characters having this I Want Statement in their main musical number. And that's what Somewhere Over the Rainbow is with Dorothy. You know, she wants, she wants more than what she already has. A life over the rainbow where you know people love and accept her because she feels neglected where she is that's just a great song and definitely one of the most easily relatable and i think comforting songs too uh of course there's other great songs as well uh, of course probably one of the most singable is we are off to see the wizard the wonderful wizard of Oz. That's, that's just so confusing. I, I think I'm just going to stop right there before I embarrass myself. <laughs> Got uh, Follow the Elbrick Road, If I Only Had a Brain. I think probably the most underrated song of the film is... If I were a king in a forest! I don't know how the Cowardly Lion does those roll slips in his tongue. When he goes, Forrest! <laughs> he definitely does a lot better than me. I'll tell you that. <sighs> it's crazy. Yeah, so... I think The Wizard of Oz works great. I think it has a fantasy film. With great world building. And a lot of the imaginative places that showcases the power of the imagination. Not just through L. Frank Baum's source material. But also the role of the filmmakers. But it's also a great musical. Like I said, all these songs are memorable. And I think even the score is really good too. It's, it does what a great score does. It's very adventurous when it needs to. It's heartfelt uh, when the movie asks for it. It's very whimsical during the musical numbers. It's, it's just a very underrated score. A lot of people don't talk about the score compared to the songs, but the score is really good. I think I even like how ambiguous the ending is. I mean, uh, the movie kind of implies, I guess, I guess spoilers for the point zero zero one percent that has not seen Wizard of Oz, but I'm sure anyone that's seen this video has seen it because it's that iconic of a film. But the movie strongly implies that Dorothy dreamt the whole experience. Uh, mainly because uh, she woke, uh, she, uh, you know, the house is still there in one piece, and you know she was still laying on the bed the whole time. And two, one of the things I love about the film is uh, the actors that were playing uh, the people around her in Kansas were also part of the Oz experience, like Dorothy, like the hired hands on the farm. Play, were also the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Cowardly Lion. Uh, there's that that ruthless lady, uh, Miss Gulch, who owned like half the land, who was also the Wicked Witch. And then there's this like con artist professor type character who was also the Wizard of Oz. 
And I thought that was neat how they were able to connect it without being too on the nose about it until you realize what truly happened, you know, at the very end of the film. But I think at the same time, just the imagination and complete respect to the Oz lore is so strong that even if the whole dream thing, I can see some criticizing as a cop out. Just the love and care of Oz is still there that, I don't know, it, there's some, there's the childlike part of me that says, no, Dorothy didn't dream this. She actually went there and the house magically came back. <laughs> but, uh, whatever. I, I still love the movie regardless. Of course, uh, we have other Oz movies too. None of them have stacked or compared to this awesome film. I think Disney's come close with making some good Oz movies. Maybe not great ones, but still watchable. Uh, I mean, because they have. They did Return to Oz in 1985, which I do consider a direct sequel to The Wizard of Oz, even though it has some continuity errors. But considering different studios made it and Oz is in the public domain, I honestly don't care about the errors. It's still a solid sequel. Definitely a darker sequel and definitely one I think that could traumatize some kitties. But again, kitties do need a good scare every once in a while to give them life lessons. And Return to Oz is the movie to do it. But definitely watch the original first. Disney also did a prequel film called, uh, I think a few years back, Sam Raimi directed it, Oz the Great and Powerful. That one had mixed reviews, but I got a kick out of that movie too. Even though a lot of people didn't like Mila Kunis as the Wicked Witch. I thought she was okay. Uh, back to the Wizard of Oz. It's a classic. What more can I say? It's just a classic, classic, classic movie. It's a great fantasy film. It's also a great musical film. I uh, love all the characters and how relatable they are, especially Dorothy. Great production designs for 1939. A lot of the visuals are still very impressive and kind of hold up to this day. Uh, great music, powerful message about you know contentment and that there's no true feeling than what you've already got. I just love messages like that. And it's just a classic, classic, relatable story that everyone can relate to. It's not trying to hammer you on the head with a deep social political message or nor does it try to be overly complex with people with complicated emotions and moral compasses like a lot of modern movies do it's just a, it's just a movie designed to entertain and inspire and the wizard of oz is just a wonderful movie i have to give it 100 out of 100 it's just a it does its job. It really does. Between the storytelling, the world building, the message, everything it was designed to do for both genres, it definitely does the very best at what it's designed to do. Obviously the highest rating a movie can possibly get on my scale. Highest on the five star range. Great, great movie. Yeah, two classic. the two classics in my classics this month both 100 out of 100 they are really really good i'm gonna try not to do reviews cons uh, consecutively of the best of the best i think that was something i think chris duckman got some flack on because for the most part he only discussed his all-time favorite classics and there are a lot of great ones don't get me wrong and i want to review as many great films as possible I do want to mix up some classics when I do this series. Obviously I'll talk about some great ones. There might be some down the line that I don't think have aged that well. I don't want to talk about you know where I stand on certain movies, maybe movies that were well received at the time but maybe modern audiences watch them and don't think they've aged all that well. Or maybe I might find a movie that didn't go over well at the time or 
you know, has considerably gotten better over time. It'll be interesting to see how this series grows on my channel. Uh, definitely look forward to more classic pre-1980s films on my YouTube channel. February I plan on tackling two movies that have won Best Picture and I am still trying to figure out which Best Picture winners I'm going to do because there are plenty of Best Picture winners from the first ceremony in 1927 all the way up to 1980. So i got to figure out which ones I'm going to do. So definitely look forward to those whenever ones I uh, figure out on doing. So that was my review of The Wizard of Oz. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had fond memories of this iconic film while watching this video. It's definitely one of the most nostalgic movies ever. Easily a classic film. I don't know anybody that hates this film. I'm kind of curious if I get a comment saying the movie is overrated or something because I don't know anyone that really dislikes this movie unless they don't like musicals or something. I can see that but I mean if they like fantasy world building stuff and they can skip the musical numbers and just get to that part but oh well you can't please everybody if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up click the subscribe button to see more content of mine and click the little bell next to it to be notified of future videos uh, I'll leave links to other stuff down in the description below including my previous installment of my classic series 12 Angry Men I'll also leave a link to my letterbox account if you're interested in seeing some other uh, fun things I do in a written format. I just did a review on there for a movie called Cutthroat Island, one of the most notorious box office bombs of all time. Yeah, Letterbox is a great place for me to talk about movies uh, that I don't have time to do on the YouTube channel. And Cutthroat Island is definitely an interesting little movie. And I have some interesting thoughts to say about that bomb, so I'll leave a link to that review if you're curious. I got some more reviews coming for you soon. Look forward to some more classics in February. Like I said, best picture winners. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!